I'm sorry, chef. I'm so, oh, I'm so sorry. Hi, I'm Saul. I'm a professional chef, and these are my $317 quesadilla ingredients. Hi, I'm John. I'm a home cook, and these are my $13 quesadilla ingredients. So long. Okay, it's fine. I can do this. Oh my god. This is heirloom? I was planning to make with la coche, a pasote, and pressed on quesadillas with salsa borracha and chapulines. The only word that I really picked up there is and and with. Very traditional Mexican ingredients for a very fancy quesadilla. I was going to make tortillas from scratch infused with chile guajillos. These are dried chilies, so kind of like maybe anchos. I also want to use with la coche. It's a delicacy in Mexico. I don't think I've ever even seen this before. I don't know what this is. It's a type of corn fungus. It's a very hard thing to grow. It's kind of like a travels. It's a mushroom. Okay, it's a mushroom. Great. I was going to make my own crema from scratch. Some nice and spicy salsa borracha. Oh, <laughs> tequila. <laughs> yeah, yep. And top it up with some crunchy chapulines. Garlic, grasshoppers. <laughs> Grasshoppers. We're gonna be making grasshopper quesadillas today. They're salty, they're crispy, spicy, and they're full of protein. With John's recipe, I have ingredients that you might find on your pantry or local grocery store. They might be on the simpler side, but I'm a professional and I will make these simple ingredients better. If I have to guess, this will all cost $13.65. Huh? I'm going to play the lotto today. So if I had to guess, all of these ingredients would cost about $210. Whoa, $317? I mean, he didn't skimp out on me. So Chef Saul left me his recipe book, which has a very pared down recipe of what I'm gonna be doing today. Oh, a little cheese. That's the support right there. <laughs> That's what I needed. Enjoy the time. Don't worry, you got this. I know you can do this. So we're working on the part of the recipe with the Wajillo tortillas. I'm assuming these are the Wajillo chilies. I called these ancho earlier, my bad. You only need the skin of the Wajillos. We remove the stamps, we remove the seeds. John, whatever you do, do not touch your eyes. I know why I'm wearing gloves. <laughs> I didn't have the urge to touch my eyes before, but now, <laughs> now. And you boil them until they're nice and soft, like my heart. Okay, so these are gonna soak until they're all soft, and then I'm gonna transfer them into this bowl. John, give me these flour tortillas, but I'm gonna make something new. I'm gonna put some of these tortillas on this tray. I'm gonna bake it in the oven at 275 till they're nice and crispy, and then I'm going to blend it to make it into a flour. These are done boiling. And then you puree them. So you make a guajillo puree. My tortillas, they look nice and crispy. Can you hear that? Huh? That's the sound of flavor. Uh, I'm gonna let this cold. I'm gonna put all the liquid from here. It's a lot of flavor in here. I'm gonna make this nice and smooth and fluffy. And I'm gonna add some beans. And I'm gonna add a little bit of texture and more flavor. And now we're making flour. So we're adding the liquid, so we're not gonna stop in, until we see a dough. And this is where the magic happens. One, two, three, voila! Magic. Never used one of these before. I'm gonna have to put the white corn masa harina in here. That looks serviceable. Okay, let's throw that in there. Let's rig this up, lock this into place. Should probably add some salt. And then add water as you go. Oh, it's looking good. It's looking like a dough, a proper dough. As soon as you don't see any dough into your hands, that means it's ready. And no residue. There we go. Now let's wrap it in some plastic. This black bean tortilla dough has been sitting for over an hour. Now I want to make this into tortillas. Black bean tortilla. It's time for me to make my tortillas. To prevent the uh, dough to stick into the tortilla press, you only need two pieces of plastic. One on the bottom, one on top. You want to put the dough in between and press it. Ooh, that's a mighty fine looking tortilla. When you have the plastic where the tortilla is, you kind of want to put it in one hand, and then on your other hand, you're going to lay the tortilla and you're going to remove the plastic. And then slowly and carefully, you're gonna lay it on the grill. There it is. Okay. I'm gonna do a little bit of oil here. Oh my God. It's looking good. I'm gonna flip this guy. I hear bubbling. Oh, we're gonna try this again. The impossible is always possible. Don't forget that. 
And these are my black bean tortillas. Usually, I feel like tortillas are a little thinner. Oh God, oh, it's breaking. I gotta save this. Okay. <laughs> I'm gonna try a thinner tortilla. No! Chef! Haha. <laughs> yes. Oh my God. Let's take it into the basket. Now I'm going to be chopping these red onions, jalapeño. I'm going to char, so we'll have a jalapeño onion crema. The reason why I leave the insides of the jalapeño is because I want the sauce to be more spicy. Now I'm going to put this into a bowl, put it to chill. All right, it's crema time, everybody. First thing I'm going to do is heat up the milk. There we go. Empty milk carton, so if I mess this up, I can't try again. Fantastic. We want to heat up the milk at 170, and we want to make sure that the milk doesn't boil. Now that these are cool, I'm gonna put it in the blender and fold it into the crema. I'm gonna add a little bit of sour cream to help puree the uh, vegetables. I wish I could make my sour cream, but no. Chef Sal said I should be very careful with the temperature and we're right now uh, above 170, so I'm gonna turn this guy off. This is the white distilled vinegar. Oh, that's, ooh. Now, our apple cider vinegar. It looks like it's getting a bit clumpy. All right, I'm gonna stir this for a couple of minutes and then I'm gonna leave it for about an hour and see how it looks after that. Our crema looks pretty good. Now, let's find out if it's good. Really good. And this is my char jalapeno and onion crema. So this has been sitting for an hour. I'm noticing a few changes in here. It's looking a little separated. We have our clumpy milk stuff and then we have our runny vinegar stuff. So after that, we're gonna use a colander to remove all the liquid and keep the curds. It looks more like cheese now. We're gonna add it to the blender. Heavy cream, lime. <laughs> all right, we're getting somewhere. Some friction. I don't know how much salt we gotta add, but I like me things salty. I'm fairly confident with how that turned out. Now that is a sturdy amount of crema. So my oven is set at 250. Now I'm going to dry these vegetables. I'm going to cut these tomatoes and then remove the insides of the tomato. This will help the tomatoes get drier faster. I can't call them sun dried tomatoes because I'm not using the sun. I'm gonna call these tomatoes sour dried tomatoes. So I'm gonna be saving some of these liquids that are inside of the tomatoes to add it to my salsa. Cause where I'm from, we don't waste anything. Cutting vegetables is not my strong suit, but I'm gonna do my best to get them as nicely cut and waste as little as possible. John, you're gonna make your salsa from scratch. One of my favorite salsas, salsa borracha, which means drunken sauce. I got these chilies here. I gotta destem them and then I gotta deseed them. I'm gonna quarter the tomatoes. I'm gonna half the onion and I'm gonna de stem, de seed, and half these jalapenos. A half a pino? Is that a good joke? I'm just gonna get right in there and just. Oh, yeah. Oh, that looks terrible. Oh, nothing pretty about that. Every time you cut a jalapeno, I'm sure you even look at it. Enjoy the beauty of nature. So we have our beautiful, fresh tomatoes, our lovely jalapenos. Probably needed to do the cilantro too. Maybe I'll just cut off the stems. I'll remove any leafage from the bottom. So I'm gonna bake these at 250 for two to eight hours. So I'll see you tomorrow. All my veggies are chopped now. Let's give them a char so that my salsa is nice and smoky. Starting to smell a bit toasty. I think that should do it. My chilies are soaking. Meanwhile, let's char the tomatoes. The next step for my salsa, I'm gonna cut this onion, put it in the blender. I'm gonna add some lime juice, salt, and the insides of the tomatoes because we are not wasting. And now we're gonna make this into smoothie. I'm gonna do shots out of this. <laughs> the moment of truth. Oh, that's some nice charring. This might be a good time to start taking things off. Let's move them over here. Get them all out of there. We gotta get to charring the rest of our veggies. And then last thing, garlic. I'm gonna add some oil to the pan. Oh, that's not the oil. Oh, and the squeezy bottle, nice, thank you. It's getting real smoky in here. You can see, I feel like I'm in a 1990s music video. These all look pretty charred up. Now I'm gonna move these to a bowl 
and I'm going to keep working on my salsa. They look good. They look like a sun-dried tomato. Look at this. But they're not sun-dried tomatoes. That's are old dried tomatoes. Now I'm going to chop this up. I'm going to add my base to these dry vegetables to keep it a little bit moist. Oil. I want the vegetables to soak as much as liquid as, as they can so they don't be too dry. All right, I'm going to take all my charred veggies, put them in the food processor, and then put them back in the pan. What makes the salsa borracha? What makes you borracho? What makes you drunk? Tequila. I do have two liquids here. I have the tequila and orange juice. The tequila will prevent it from spoiling so soon. Salt and then some pepper. Here we go. I'm going lowish heat. It's not even done yet, but it is probably the best salsa that I've ever made. And that's all thanks to you, Chef Saul. This is all thickened up. I'm super happy about it. It looks delicious. This is my salsa borracha, my drunk salsa. Instead of pico de gallo, I'm gonna be doing a quick pico red onion. So I'm gonna do a julian cut. And for this step, you have to close your eyes. And now I'm gonna use some limes. And I'm gonna do this because this is gonna help remove the juice easier. The lamb job right now is to pickle the onions, right? Because it's full of acidics. Acidics cures things. Okay, now jalapenos. Salt, pepper. Now normally you use vinegar, you boil. This is a very simple way to eat onions. We're gonna let this sit and really pickle, and we're gonna move to the next thing. I'm gonna chop up the mushrooms for the filling. I'm gonna loosely chop because I don't know how to do anything else. Mushrooms are chopped. So I'm gonna put them in this bowl and set them off to the side and then I'll move on to my herbs. Epazote, never heard of this herb before. It's kind of some like spice fragrance to it. I call it the Mexican cousin of the basil. These are my epazote leaves that we took off. Now to the purslane. Never worked with purslane before, never heard of it. Now that all this is ready, I can start my filling. It's time to grind our chicken. The grinder has to be ice cold, so this just came out of the freezer, and the chicken too. So that will help have a smoother grinder and shape too. I'm gonna take this chicken and turn it into a patty. And that's what I will use for my smashed chicken quesadilla. And that's how we ground chicken. All right, it's time to put my filling together. Now this part is where I'm comfortable, putting a bunch of stuff in a pan and cooking it. When making the filling of the quesadilla, it's the Mexican ratatouille. So we're gonna start with a little bit of garlic, onion. So let's get to stirring, I hear that sizzle. Now you're gonna add the oyster mushrooms, saute for a little bit. Now you're gonna add the huitlacoche. Huitlacoche tastes sour, and that's why you add other ingredients to balance the flavor. And those ingredients you find in any market in Mexico. You will have the best Mexican ratatouille of your life. This is gonna cook down, it's gonna take a bit. So let's start with the cheeses. I love Oaxaca cheese so much, it just comes in like, this spiral of art. All you gotta do with Oaxaca cheese, in my knowledge, is just rip it apart. It's very string cheesy. It's like a mozzarella equivalent. So that's our Oaxaca cheese. And now we're gonna get to crumbling my queso fresco. There's no nice way to do this. This cheese is called quesadilla. Incredible. So I'm gonna shred this guy. See, oh God, <laughs> slippery. My cheeses have been completed. Back to my mushrooms. You got some liquid coming off the mushrooms, which looks really nice. We're gonna want that to go away though. The flavor wants to stay, but the liquid wants to go. With these tortillas, I'm gonna make a chicharron to garnish my quesadilla. We're just gonna fry them. Chicharron is the skin of the pork that has been dehydrated, and then it's fried, so it's nice and crispy. But we don't have any pork. So basically, you're gonna fry it both sides. We're gonna do this bunch of times until it's nice and crispy. Look, the tortilla is telling me, take him out of the oil. I'm already crispy. No, you're not, baby. I want it to be crispier. I'm gonna put it right here. I'm gonna open this taco seasoning mix original from El Paso. FYI, I never, ever use this. So I have to try this. Is that wrong with this? If you like this, good for you. If you don't like this, good for you. We're gonna sprinkle just a little bit here, and there you have it, my tortilla chicharrón. Purslane, throw those in here. And now you're gonna add some epazote. It's a little bit of bitter, but it's delicious. And lastly, my jalapenos, some good char on the bottom of the pan. So this filling seems pretty good to go. I'm gonna move to my next thing. Okay, so I have my chicken. This has cumin, has salt, so it's not that bad, right? Now I'm gonna add tomatoes and jalapenos. 
black pepper, and queso, which is a Mexican blend. Monterrey Jack, cheddar cheese. Why we call it this Mexican? Because a Mexican is using it. So now I'm gonna make some four ounces balls. Is this four ounces? Ah, oh my gosh, 3.9. Now my chicken is ready to be cooked. Ooh, yeah, that's hot. So I'm gonna put on cheese. I'm gonna put it on both sides. Fill up in one side of the tortilla only. Only one side because you're gonna fold the tortilla, right? I have a tendency to load up things way too much. Now we're gonna add the filling. I gotta work quick. Grasshoppers, another gift of earth. It's they're salty, they're lemony. Wow, they look really uh, crunchy. All right, now we fold. Now we let the cheese do its thing. Now it's time to put everything together and I'm gonna have to move quickly. All right, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put the chicken here. I'm gonna smash it. When I have a nice sear, I'm going to flip it. I'm gonna put a little bit of cheese. I'm gonna put the tortilla on top. <sighs> Beautiful. I'm gonna put more cheese now. And then I'm gonna do a little bit of salsa. And after the salsa, I'm gonna add a little bit of my chicharron. I want some crunchiness on my quesadilla. Chef, that's not a chicharron. I know it's not a chicharron. It has the texture of a chicharron. Okay, I'm gonna give it a gentle flip. Be cautious, be cautious. Aha, that's looking pretty solid. Then I'm gonna throw it on a plate. And this is what I fold it. It's time for you to go to bed. Cover it with your blanket and sweet dreams. Shh. Have a good night. So we just make the impossible possible. And these are my quesadillas and I'm ready to play. Before I plate the quesadilla, there is one thing that I need to do. I gotta try a grasshopper. It's actually pretty good. Kind of like a crunchy olive. All right, let's do like a diagonal. That seems very chic. This is actually the first time I'm using this cheese today. It's cotilla cheese. A little crumbly on the outside, it's imperfect. That's a style. And then we'll put on some parsley. Now grasshoppers. Oh, I almost forgot. My old friend cilantro's here. And lastly, I'm gonna put my crema and my salsa on the plate. And that's my take on Chef Saul's quesadilla. I'm gonna put the quesadilla in the middle. I'm gonna do the crema. And then I'm gonna do some of the juice from here all over the plate. Why everything I do is so pretty. If you don't believe me, look at my kids. A nice piece of chicharron. We're gonna garnish it with a little bit of my pico onions and one jalapeno because everything tastes good with heat. And this is my cheesy smash chicken quesadilla with black bean tortilla and sun-dried tomato salsa. Hey, Chef Saul, I had a great day. You look like you had a great day. <laughs> oh, shit. You did that? It looked like I did this. Good job, man. You good job, are you kidding Look me? Look at you. How did you fare with uh, my very skimpy ingredients? It was, <laughs> it was very, it was, I think it was one of the hardest dishes to do. I was freaking out, I was worried about the tortilla. So the flour tortilla became flour again. And then I add some beans and make and make a black bean tortilla. You reverse engineered the tortilla to go back to its chemical compound of flour. Yeah, that was like You are a scientist. Sounds like I did that. <laughs> Okay. The moment of truth. Mmm. This actually came out wonderful. Honestly, I thought it was gonna be doughy, but it's not, so mm. it's good. To me, this is a quesadilla that I grew up eating. And what you did the presentation, so far, is a 10. Cheers. Give it to me straight, chef. I wish you didn't eat the half, so I can eat it all for me. <laughs> okay, cheers. Cheers. Salud. Salud.